it seems like in the 1970s, there was like a push for theory construction. Like I know uh, Murray Webster worked with, I think his name is uh, David Weiler. Um, who was like a oh, David Willer. David Willer. David Willer, yeah, who was like a physicist who helped with theory construction. David Willer wrote a very good book uh, that uh, was not a really a theory construction book, but it was, uh, it was one of the books that had a tremendous influence on me. It was one of his first books. I think he, I think he wrote it with his wife, it was Willer Willer. And it had a huge effect on me uh, because he, was, he argued kind of what I was thinking I should argue figure out what the busy properties of the universe are, then try to state the relationships among those a simple way. And he liked to do mathematics. He always did a lot more mathematical stuff in his later work in exchange. Uh, but I didn't feel that I was obligated to the mathematical part, which I did try in several books. And I still do it. Actually, when I'm thinking to myself, I write things down in some of the quasi-math just, just to get it down real quickly. Now, then I tend to translate it to words because that tends to, to, to communicate to more people. Um, but uh, so well, the, there was a whole group at Stanford uh, and, and Mary Webster was one of those uh, you know, star pupils that came out of the Joe Berger shop, I like to call it. And, uh, but there were a lot of really good people there, Bernie Cohen and Buzz Eldich, and uh, I, I'm sure there's others that I'm blocking on, but. They were producing, oh, Sandy Dornbush, they were producing really interesting work, uh, fairly narrow work on status processes and uh, trying to f uh, formalize the theories. Uh, and that was fine as far as it went. Uh, but uh, the, the, the scope of the theories was pretty narrow. Uh, sta status process is the very fundamental property of the social universe. It's something that's very involved in anything humans do. So it's, it's generic, it's not, it's not off the, it's, it's always there. So it's a, certainly a legitimate thing to develop some theories about, but it's tied, the, the, those, it's tied to social structure and culture and roles and lots of other stuff. And they didn't talk about that or they have very vague terms for it. And if I, if I, if I ever uh, want something like a, a Cooley Award, I would say I would give a talk the title something like bringing more social into social psychology. Yeah, because, uh, so all those processes, status process, roles, interaction, uh, motive states, uh, identity processes, they're all embedded in sociocultural structures at various levels of organization. You got to bring all that in there somehow if you're going to read that right. You can't just do little narrow studies of labs. Uh, only very good work has been done on that. I mean, I, I, I read that literature all the time. That's one of those literatures I always read uh, in status attainment or just status processes. It's, it's something I always keep up with. Mm -hmm. um, so you are one of the, you've been kind of instrumental in within experimental sociology in terms of synthesizing, like you're oh. synthesizing a wide variety of their work. Like you're saying, a lot of people are very uh, caught up in their specializations. Um, how do you view overall what experimentalists are doing? And are you alone in trying to synthesize uh, their work? Uh, I find they're not very uh, happy with, uh, with what I do generally uh, because um, I don't buy the whole thing. Uh, that uh, the, 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 these are the science, si most science is very specialized. You have people devoting their career to a fairly narrow range of phenomena and doing exper experimental work and, and dramatically increasing knowledge. And I think social psychology in general knows an awful lot about uh, human behavior in a social cultural context. Uh, and uh, so I'm not gonna criticize it that, that because that, that's one way you, you do science. That what I do criticize is that uh, overly specialized people tend not to look over the fence next door to next door or three doors down. There's a whole lot of other things that people are studying that are very relevant to what they're studying, but they don't read that. They, they have their own journals, their own uh, cohorts and, uh, uh, and networks of, uh, of fellow travelers. And so they don't read very broadly. And that's my biggest criticism of almost all sociologists, quite frankly, particularly now. All they read about is about justice, they don't read about anything else. Uh, but even, even the, the really good scientific work being done by experimental social psychology, they have that tendency. 
Mm-hmm. So I come along and I and I say, well, okay, uh, I, I I'm I'm happy to sort of look at it all and write a, a sort of general propositions out that incorporate your ideas and a lot of other people's ideas that maybe you wouldn't think are relevant to you, but I, you could see. I just I hope you could see that they they are relevant. Uh, and uh, I don't think uh, they always appreciate that. You know, it's uh, I've desecrated. Uh, they're a narrow patch, and, and, uh, and so uh, it's, it's. But it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to do it. So they, it's. Uh, I, I'm sorry they don't always like it, but that's too bad uh, because I'm trying to explain how the world works, not how uh, status processes per se work. Status processes are embedded in social structure and culture, and there's a whole lot of other things going on, and they, they're part of the status process. Mm-hmm. And I'm always going to be pulling other things in that they don't want to talk about. For example, exchange theory, you've got about five different types of exchange theory. They're all talking about exchange theory, but they're entirely different models. They don't, the people don't even talk, hardly talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got the rational choice, you got the Emerson network people, you've got Dave Willer's uh, elementary theory and uh, sort of uh, various other versions that come somewhat from politi- political science and economics exchange theory. And, and it's as if they're not talking about the same thing. They're talking about the same process. And yet they have different vocabularies and different propositions and different genres and different journals and different networks of friends. And they're never looking across the fence to see but, what people are doing. And then and someone they're like you. Not even trying to, to generalize, make it more general. So you can have a general theory of exchange dynamics that, and with, using concepts of and propositions and models that everyone will accept. It's kind of bizarre that, you know, they almost seem to want to stay like in a silo. If someone like you comes along and it's saying, hey, I can kind of bridge the gap here. You're saying that they get mad at you or they get... Oh, uh, they, I, I, my impression is uh, they're, t- they're sort of tolerated because uh, there is, when I do take parts of someone's theory and add it to this thing, that, that, that's that's to me, a compliment to the, what they've done. Uh, they don't always see it that way, but I think it's a compliment. Uh, and I think it's a comfortable to be in a silo. In a silo. Um, it, you, it, it's easier to keep a handle on everything. Yeah. I live in a world where I'm always behind in every literature because I read everything. I mean, I read every bit about every social process uh, we can think about. I, I'm going to read about it but I'm always going to be behind in a lot of the processes. The only one I have to turn, turn to it and I need it for something I'm also I'm doing on the general affairs. Like, do I catch up? And then I fall behind on other things. It's, it's, uh, there's only so much you can read. And I'm a fast reader, but, uh, uh, and uh, it, it's just, uh, so I live in a world of constant frustration at not fully being able to, uh, get all the literatures I want to get. And sometimes I'm a little unsure. I've taken some things, but I, I always just have a suspicion that there's more that I'm missing. And that's, all, and then when that is the case, and I find it the case, and I redo these things. And that's part of the fun of what I do. When I, when I read new things and learn more, uh, I'll take the old theory that I've done that I thought was pretty good. Now I, I can make it a lot better. That's the whole point of being a theorist. And that's what we, we should be doing as theorists. It's perfectly legitimate, of course, to theorize in a very narrow way. I, I, li- I love people who theorize in a, a narrow way because they've done a lot of the hard work for me. Uh, if I have to comb through the data and figure out what the underlying theory is, but if some people like the you know, uh, expectation states people, they've really developed pretty sophisticated theories. And so this is great. I've had all my preliminary work done for me. I can just take that and integrated with other theories, uh, and uh, so with role theories, with self-identity theories. Uh, those literatures aren't talking to each other. They, they sort of know about each other, but uh, they, they hang out a little bit because they're all social psychologists. Um, but uh, I, will, uh, I, I read, you know, world systems theory. I write stuff in world systems theories. It's probably hard to believe sometimes. That, and I write things on uh, neuro, bio, neurology and biology and everything in between. I'm interested in that. But I'm always a little behind. 